Hello, I'm Megan Weiss. I'm the Associate Director of Outreach and Program Development at the South Carolina Institute of Medicine and Public Health. As you may surmise from our name, we work where medicine and public health intersect. So as we think about medicine and public health, what are the differences? As you're learning in this course, they are very closely related, but they are different. Medicine focuses on the individual, and public health focuses on the health of communities. So when we think about how we are spending our healthcare dollars, and thinking about the health outcomes that we get from those dollars, are we getting what we would expect for what we spend as a nation? The United States is number one in healthcare expenditures as a percentage of our gross national product in the world. So arguably, we have the most advanced healthcare system in the world. You know, if you have a heart attack or you need critical care, we are the place you want to be. But when we take a look at our gross national product and how much we spend on healthcare, are we really getting what we would expect? We spend the highest percentage of our gross domestic national product on healthcare out of all the industrialized nations, but only rank 34th in terms of life expectancy. So we have arguably the greatest healthcare system, but we have shorter, sicker lives than many of our peer countries. Also, if you take a look at South Carolina specifically, we rank 42nd within the nation. So when we think about where our dollars are being spent, the United States spends about $3 trillion annually for health care, and only 3% of that is on prevention. So why is this important? Well, when you take a look at what our health care dollars are spent on, 86% of that is spent on chronic diseases. So while we have an amazing sick care system, in terms of prevention, there is a lot that needs to be done. We have a lot of money into treatment, but not as much into prevention. So as, what can we do to connect the medicine and the public health to really tie these two together so that we can get the health outcomes that we need and that we frankly deserve for the amount of time, money, and effort that we're putting into the system? Well, this is where medicine and public health and community leaders, members of community, social workers, everyone, we need to work together and we need to work differently. Some of this is already happening. With the passage of the Affordable Care Act in 2010, we've really entered into a new phase of public health in this country, a new era when we're talking about public health history. The Affordable Care Act really is pushing our reimbursement-based, our volume-based system, where people are paid, medical systems are paid based on the amount of services provided, to a value-based system where payments are made based on the health outcome. When people go to see a medical provider, do they come away healthier? and are they having those improved health outcomes. So by taking everything together, we can really work to do this. And really the way that this can be done, again, from the public health perspective, working with medicine, is through policy systems and environmental change. And this is a new way of thinking about public health for a lot of people. Let me give you a few examples. When we talk about the healthcare system, we're talking about, again, changing from value-based to volume-based medicine. But what hospitals and communities can do is work together. For example, in the upstate of South Carolina, Spartanburg Regional Medical Center is working with Access Health South Carolina. They're working to help bring patients in. They want to reduce hospital readmissions, reduce people becoming sick or avoidable hospitalizations, and also work on preventing uncompensated care. So by working together, they are getting connecting acute care to primary care so that patients are getting that preventive, to preventive care that they need. And the hospital has seen a 13 to 1 investment in this. So not only are health outcomes being seen, but there are also savings that can then be reinvested in different ways. We can also talk about policy and those systems and laws and either at the state, federal, or local level that affect health. So what we really need to think about with those is everybody working together and understanding that it's just not just your health policy laws, your classic laws that you're thinking about in terms of what is the Medicaid budget or a law that has health in the name. We're talking about education policy. We're talking about transportation policy. It's pulling it all together for our health in all policies and making sure that everyone has that understanding and background to be able to pull it together and no matter what we're talking about, be able to bring that health focus to that as we work to address the social determinants of health. And also we want to talk about environmental change. When we talk about environmental change in public health, people usually think about, oh, clean air, clean water, some of your, again, traditional aspects of public health. As we're moving into this new era, we also need to think about the safe, supportive environments that we're building around us. How are our streets built, again, with transportation? Are we able to bike and walk to work? Are we able to do different things as food available in different areas for people to be able to buy? So it's not just having someone make an individual choice, maybe to go on a walk or to be more physically active, 
or to buy more fruits and vegetables, but it's when they go home, are they able to leave their house? Do they feel safe going for a walk at night if, you know, that's when they get home from work? Are there fruits and vegetables to buy at the local corner market? Because some communities don't have supermarkets. So when we're thinking about that built environment, that's a very important aspect as well. So as we consider all these policy system and environmental changes, the other aspect we really need to think about is to make sure that all of us are impacted by these changes that we are working together to make. We need to improve life where we live, work, play, pray, and learn. And again, this means all of us. One ambition of the law was to increase access to insurance. And while this is absolutely important for addressing for accessing health care in our country, we also need to think about transportation, hours of service, and other aspects for that. The bottom line of everything that we've talked about is to really affect change for us to really be able to work together and bring medicine and public health together to improve health outcomes is to really focus on prevention. And to do that, we need to work on policy systems and environmental changes. So as we're viewing the integration of medicine and public health through this prevention lens, the other aspect we want to make sure that we really think about is making sure that all these changes, all these systems changes, policy changes, and environmental changes are applied so that all of us, all of us living in the country, are influenced and have the positive impacts for that. We need to ensure that health equity is achieved. So as we all continue to work together to focus on improving health, what we need to remember is that we can do this through implementing policy systems and environmental changes, implementing health in our policies, thinking about our built environment, and having systems that are equitably accessible by all and work for everyone to be able to get the care and um, both for treatment and for prevention that everybody needs.